Okay, here we are in an old boiler room, uh, elementary school. Pretty cool door here. It's all covered in sheet metal. Door. Danger contains asbestos fibers. Avoid creating dust. Shit. Well, what we got here is pretty much the whole school is on pneumatic controls that were installed in 1961. Anyways, we got uh, control air from the compressor coming in and that air runs about 80 pounds or so before it gets reduced and, and you can see it's coming down here and it's coming over to a kind of a manifold setup and it's got a like the last thing it's got is a PRV right there, pressure reducing valve. That'll take it down to 20 pounds for main air, which everything works on 3 to 15 pounds. But what we got here is uh, it comes down, then it comes over, it goes through a filter, and then it goes through a desiccant bowl. But, you know, they have it set up so it's valved into this refrigerated air dryer. And what the refrigerated air dryer does is it takes air in on the top, takes it, refrigerates it, then it goes into that bowl, that bowl right there and it blows down. When it fills up with moisture, a valve will open like a float and it'll shoot it out. And then I think that's a reversing valve right there. Sometimes they, uh, no, those are check valves. Make sure air can only flow one way, you know, because if you get like uh, your fucking compressor shits the bed and then your system is charged higher than the compressor and it'll fucking start bleeding back and they don't like air flowing backwards so we got the boiler room here I'm kinda set up in here I'm gonna put an EPO emergency power off there on the wall but it's tied into DDC it's just like a boiler enable command is gonna cut out there's the old control air compressor looks pretty good um, they're not gonna have much use for it now other than shop air you know I don't know running a new pneumatic tool this boiler is pretty old it's a low pressure steam boiler as you can tell you got the McDonnell Miller uh, low water cutout right there it's uh, disassembled and it's hanging right there you see there's the low water cutout what happens is that float stays up when it drops um, it shuts off the boiler because what happens is that's the boiler uh, low limit right here see right here that elevation is about uh, the same as the bottom of this gauge glass and then in the middle here you got your normal operating water level and then you got high water right there this is a low pressure steam boiler probably about 15 pounds so what happens is, is you got some valves down here too. Basically you test the low water cutout probably, eh, preferably once a day, but they probably do it once a week. And uh, it's all hardwired. That low pressure, uh, not low pressure, that uh, low water cutout is hardwired into like the ladder for the boiler. And that's all based off your CSD1. Combustion safety devices, that's an ASME code. Don't ask me how I know. So these three things up there, they're all typical on every steam boiler. They're your, uh, and that pretty much every one I have seen is Honeywell's. You've got your, uh, your boiler operator, which, uh, you know, basically tells the boiler when your steam pressure is low, it tells the boiler to fire up. So you have your on, your off, and then you got your high limit. And I'm pretty sure that's the high limit right there and uh, I'm thinking if you get to 30 pounds or some shit it'll shut the boiler down because that means your operator is stuck anyway there's always three of them and they're always up here off this manifold and I'm gonna try and get a, a steam pressure transducer right there that will take it back over to controls and they can see what's going on all this stuff all that is basically part of the boilers ladder logic and you don't fuck with that only boiler people do That valve up there, up at the top, 
see this right here that's the boiler safety and there's a formula to size safeties and there's a like a size for the pipe and whatnot and basically if ever should happen that the boiler doesn't shut down you know at about two times the normal working pressure or two and a half times that sucker will open up and it'll it'll let the steam go into the sump here so what we got here is on top of the boiler you got your steam main coming out and you're coming over to a manifold and in this manifold to separate parts of the building you've got like this will be going off to one section of the building that will be going off to another basically they can isolate if they ever get you know uh, something wrong with the pipe they can shut off a part of the building without having to shut off the whole building completely pretty much all boilers are like this uh, steam even ones that are now uh, heating hot water but I mean I've seen ones like this same thing three stories tall um, much bigger manifold right here we got the condensate return because as you know steam goes out it's used it shrinks it turns into basically distilled water and it comes back then we got like a condensate water you gotta heat it because if you put cold water in the boiler you're gonna get fucked I haven't studied this too much but they're all pretty much the same you'll see these all over basically it's got a vent right there for air because somehow air does get entrained with the condensate but you gotta remove it we got water coming in here they've shut off water to the building here we go here's where the water turns into the sprinkler main and then you got your domestic cold water and whatnot coming in here and then you've got a backflow preventer right here and you're going up and you're gonna go out and make feed water and shit for the boiler this is your standard gas train I don't know how many inches of water column this gas is it might be three to five pounds it might be inches of water column but you come in and you've got your gas PRV there and that big one that's your shutoff then you got your PRV and then you got your vent off your PRV if they ever got too much pressure and that goes way up and out I think probably to the third floor here's your solenoid valve which uh, when your burner wants to fire that will fire up and then you got this little guy right back here that right there is your gas pilot for the burner it's separate than the actual burner because you have to have the pilot light to light the burner that right there is like a some kind of manual safety I forget what it is I used to know here's your burner assembly what's up painter dude How's it going? just uh, making a movie about the boiler <laughs> hey people like this shit you come in you got your uh, gas pilot right here goes to a solenoid valve and then that goes out to your burner then you got your your main coming in here to your burner for the uh, actual fuel to heat it there's your blower motor you got some dampers here for combustion air so your whole combustion process is controlled by this and what it'll do is there's a specific code and it has to basically turn on the blower has to run it has to purge like two cycles of air through the boiler before it will even allow the pilot to come on so you fire you basically you purge then you do your pilot then you'll uh, turn on your combustion air once it has verified that the pilot is on and there is like a little sensor around here somewhere it's a fire eye there you got a sight glass right there but anyways there is a, a proof to make sure that your pilot's on
What we got going on over here is we have a bunch of uh, unit ventilators, which is like a tiny air handler. Well, it's like a VAV box, but it takes outside air and mixes it with return air for an economizer so that you do get your outside air. Um, and then it heats it or it just brings on full outside air to cool the place. But anyways, they had them on a time clock here. And so now we're going to do DDC control and uh, the little relay is going to actually be in the unit ventilator. So the problem is when you use a contactor downstream, uh, somebody goes in, they're servicing the unit ventilator, they think it's off, but it fires up and then it toasts their ass. So anyways, I got to do all this 120 work here and make sure it's all done right. And uh, here's what I got right here. I got unit ventilator 15 on the third floor and it's fed by circuit C2-2. So that's what I'm doing now, doing the 120 and then I'll be piping in here, uh, running all my stuff. I'm going to have a control panel over there. And it'll have, I think, 16 ins and outs. And then I'll have my 24 volt uh, transformer, five taps, 96VA each.